Hello and welcome back to some more Vintage Story. What are we today? Well, it's still the end of the day. Gonna make some more copper so we can make the um, the uh, the cages. I don't know how much cop. I don't know how much we need for this. So I'm gonna make copper. <laughs> really? You did? Didn't you just say that you would make copper? Shut up. We're gonna make a little bit extra because, like I said, I don't know how much I want to need and I want to make four cages, so we're gonna make a boatload of copper. If I still have some, actually, I think I do. Yeah, I've got a lot of it, actually. Where's me crucible? Nobody leave the room. Where did my crucible go? There my crucible went. Oh god, it's stuck in a weird-ass spot. There we go. Boop. Put that in, and we want to get eight units. That needs to be 649. There we go. And grab the that's casserite. Where the f oh, there we go. What a second I was about to say like where did the f did my cup my coal go? I made a lot of it. Uh yeah there we go. Brain was thinking like what do you do with this stuff? Light it on fire, dumbass. There we go. All right, it is burning. That can go back into there. Um, that needs to be there, 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 there. Not, don't do that. Don't do that. I don't know why. I'm in a bit of a weird mood. 14 tin bronze nuggets. That came from... I don't know what that came from, but 14 ain't too bad. That means we lost very little actual material. But 42, so I still have enough for like four, not uh, you know, tin items. Copper melts at uh, right a high amount of degrees. Um, high amount of degrees. Um, put that, that, that. Uh, grab that. I don't know where my lantern went there. Let's put that on the roof temporarily. Yeah, I need to make a couple more of those, but I only have one more candle. Now you can make candles, by the way. Uh, in case you were wondering, candle. You can make them from what? Beeswax. Have you found any beeswax? <laughs> oh, I have not, my good sir. So, I've never found bees in my entire time playing this game, which I think is by now over 100 hours, which isn't that much in the grand scheme of things. I have never found bees. Not the bees. Why is this game so good? Ah! <laughs> And it's not that it necessarily is like, it's just, it's not that, it's just time just, just goes when you're playing it. Like, I, I have the feeling always like, I've, 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 oh, I've just quickly built a shed. You're an hour further along. You're like, what? An hour, but I only, I only built a tiny shed. How is that even possible? Um, there we go. We're going to make some more stew while we're at it. Um, it's a bit dark, but I can see, so that's the perfect amount of temp uh, temperature. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it should be enough. Oh, we already got fences in there, that's right. They didn't like the maple fences. Burn! <laughs> and that's lit. Very lit. Um, and why don't we eat some more pie while we're waiting for the copper to melt and there we go i okay now we're still good on we don't actually need that much charcoal really all right we'll dump the um remaining uh flax into the uh into the thing here pop up and you go into the vegetable one yeah, we've more than enough food to get through the uh, winter. Um, I always wondered, because I was not reading about this this game before I played, where people were like, oh yeah, you need to like do a lot of work to prepare yourself for winter, and it's, you know, first winter will probably kill you, and winter is difficult, and I never had this problem. Um, uh, like, maybe it's the farmer inside of me, but... You don't need to spend that much time. Now, do a bit of exploring, find a couple of seeds, and you're good. Right. Basic survival in this game isn't that difficult. 
Because when you start getting into the more advanced stuff, that's when things start taking a turn for the worse, I guess. Let's just put one in extra just to be sure, but I don't think we need it. Then we'll fill all of those up, and then we'll go to bed, I guess. Look at the waviness. My roof, it's waving. The original idea, actually, that I would make a chimney there. <laughs> Why did you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Never got around to it. <laughs> I do actually prefer this little house that I've got here over my other house. I probably may show you. Ah, you know what? At the end of the episode, I'll just load in my original, uh, my first playthrough save, and I'll show you what I got there. That's in the middle of winter. Uh, and it does use a couple of mods that I don't have installed right now. So I might not be able to load it in, but it should be fine. Because it's mostly terrain generation stuff. Um, no, I think... I think it's a good thing that we've got the extra one in here. Because I don't know how fast the temperature will drop. It's probably fast enough that it will just barely not go over the threshold. I'd rather be safe than sorry, right? Come on, you prick, you prick. I don't think it needs to reach this temperature, it needs to just stay long enough at the melting temperature for it to work, so there we go. I do like how the crucible is now white hot, and the moment that it's empty, it's just like ambient temperature again. I do like this process. Oop, ambient temperature. <laughs> I no longer need this, so that can go back in. Um, in the meanwhile, let's check on our food. Just completely fried, probably. Yep, there we go. We'll take that out. Because uh, we don't want it to, you know, would be a waste if we kept it burning for any longer than is necessary. Let's put that on the floor because we're still at home so it's fine I think it's because I control shift a lot of the um, stuff instead of just doing it like a right click on the floor that's why it goes weird the fire just died just go <laughs> turn the lights off Yeah, if you just do shift, it just puts it in the middle. The control shift prepares it like for stacking, I guess. Uh, this is still uh, probably hot enough to ignite it. Yep, so let's not. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. If we break code about now, we wake up too early. So we're just going to sit around a little bit. Let's just check on the field real fast. Ooh, I kind of want to check something else real quick, though. I think it takes a couple more days. Uh, yeah, we're at 60%. But, you know, I want to get that bowl. Like, just for, like, the... Because we... I uh, was working on that, like, last episode during the entire round. This thing does one more damage and has more accuracy than my current bow. So... Allows me to use shittier arrows more often. Got some snow in the air occasionally. Oh, we're looking. I probably should clean this up at some point. Oh, these are ready. Well, let's... Gather them while we're at it. This is seven out of nine, six out of nine. So we've got a lot more flax going than I anticipated. These are almost done. These are almost done. That's almost done. That's more flax. I'm not gonna replant any of it, by the way. Just gonna let this grow out and then we'll uh, uh, let the field fallow for a while, I guess. Uh, I'm just going to quickly um, hold that up. The nights are dark and scary. Do I have any holes left? No. A hole. That's a shovel. Uh, 
There we go. Right. Yeah, uh, no, what I'm in. Just I may, you may have noticed that the last episode, this one, I'm in a pretty good mood. Which is always good when I'm in a good mood. I like being in a good mood, surprisingly enough. As angry as I occasionally sound, I do actually enjoy being in a good mood. Um, I'm rarely angry. I call it, I would call it passionate because I'm I um find it being angry is just a kind of a waste of of energy, really. Um, but I'm I'm a passionate individual. And I usually get more um, angry, I guess, out of disappointment than anything else. I rarely hate. I'm mostly disappointed. <laughs> and another couple of you thinking, isn't that like sort of worse? Well, in certain regards, yes. I think, um, uh, like, I mean, for example, as a teenager, right? If your parents are angry at you, you're kind of like, yeah, fuck you too. You know, it doesn't really bother that you. But for most people, I guess there's always that one person out there that's like, oh my god, my parents will be angry at me. A lot of teens will be like, yeah, my parents will be angry at me, but who gives a shit? They're a bunch of fucking losers anyway. Because, you know, you're a teenager, so your parents are a bunch of losers because you, you don't realize how tough their life actually is or isn't. Because some parents out there are literally should not have had children, like, ever. But that's beside the point. But... Your parents being disappointed in you just feels that much worse. It's like they're not angry. They're not shouting at you. They just look at you and they go like, yeah. Yeah, I was just kind of disappointed, man. That's it. Like, Because then, you know, when they're angry, that this sort of also shows that they're still caring, right? Because that's why they're angry, because they still care. And they want you to do better. But parents that are disappointed, they just look at you and like, yeah, we kind of have given up as well. So, uh, good luck with that, buddy. Ah, that's gotta hurt. Ah, that's gotta hurt. At least hurt for me. I, uh, I had a massive burnout in my early 20s and uh, dropped out of, uh, out of college at the time. And my dad's a workaholic. I think that's the most accurate description I can give about it. And I, I come from a farmer's family. So um, we genuinely have the philosophy, um, there is work 24-7 of the day, and there's very little reason for you to sit on your ass basically ever, uh, simply because um, there is always something that needs to be done. Um, and, you know, if it's not like direct care for the animals, it's probably... Uh, something like, uh, you know, cleaning is always something that needs cleaning because, you know, you don't have enough hours in the day to maintain a farm on your own. It's fucking impossible. Um, but, you know, we did our best. We do, actually, because my sister still runs the farm really well, actually. You know. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. So you kind of grow up in, in a family where the genuine this philosophy lives there is no real reason for you to ever sit in your ass and the downside of that is is that you quite easily uh burn yourself out because you're so used to always working always working and never taking a break um because why would you right there's still work then that needs to be done if it isn't um if it isn't um uh, Milking the cows, cleaning the cows, taking care of the cows. There's still, you know, calves that needs to take care. There's always work. So, uh, and my dad has figured out a way to do this without too much, you know, mental strain upon himself. And I went to this philosophy in college as well, right? So basically, you spend the eight hours a day in college. Because uh, uh, we would have lessons from 9, uh, 8.30, often to 6 o'clock. So you spend a lot of time at school. Uh, and then you have two years, two years, two hours off, uh, like between the first, uh, between the morning and the afternoon. So from like 12 to 2, we usually had time for ourselves. 
but it kind of was expected that you would do a lot of your schoolwork during that as well. But you know, you're ambitious and you want to do well and all of that kind of stuff. And so in the end, I just, my, I couldn't cope with it at the time because I couldn't find a, a healthy uh, school life balance because, uh, you know, you also have your, your socials, you have your, and I don't mean social media. I mean, just, you know, actually doing stuff that is people normally do like i was uh waiting uh at uh, my college bar for my uh, uh study group um there's a name for that it's uh it's not entirely the same as like uh, like a house uh but like a uh like a sorority type of deal sort of not exactly the same but it is fairly similar anyway so i would be waiting bar uh, having bar duty as a barman for uh, at least um, uh, three times, uh, three evenings in a week. And I would be very ambitious with my schoolwork as well. So in the end, I kind of burned out and I felt so ashamed for it. And especially uh, towards my dad um, uh, and, and this, this, this mindset of like, I failed um, in his eyes. And I was so afraid I was a disappointment. And it took me like almost a few years to uh add some quite a bit of therapy also like just not not, not just for like disappointing my dad but also for the fact that just you know you had a fucking burnout dude um your mental health isn't really at the greatest uh point in life right now so maybe you should uh also take care of that but you know but what hurt me the most, like, in the entire thing wasn't the fact that I failed college. It wasn't the fact that I had to drop out for a couple of years of therapy. It was the idea that I had failed my dad, right? Because my dad can do this. And it's not entirely, like... Because the difference between me and my dad is, and it still sort of is, and it's the same thing that my, my sister that now runs the farm has, and my other sister, my, my, my kid brother. Uh, I call him a kid brother, the guy's 30. <laughs> uh but it, it, turning 31 this year but um is he can just let something go like yeah no i i'm gonna now take take a nap i'm gonna relax right now i'm gonna read a book and he wasn't bothered by um uh the fact that um there would still be be a a crap ton of work that needed to be done like no you know i'll, I'll get to it when 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 i get to it uh, which is not right now. I I can never do that. <laughs> it's just not how I function as a human being. I grew up, and he did it as well, but I grew up, there's always something to do. And my grandma, who lived in a different house, like, but uh, lived, on the, lived on the farm with us as well, just, just always accentuated that feeling as well as a, uh, like... Um, uh, like if you were, you were relaxing. My mom hated this a lot. Uh, when you were finally like having a bit of time for yourself or relaxing, she would just come over like, "Hey, you have time to read a book. You have time to do work." So I, I grew up with it. That's a, and it's like I love, uh, I loved my grandma. She's dead now, so you know I can't really say too many negative things about her. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh. Yeah, that, that wasn't the greatest growing up. So the entire idea of you being burned out and being in a burnout is is is, a, is difficult to accept, I guess, for most people. Because people that get in a burnout are people that are uh, allow themselves to get into that situation. And I don't want to point blame at them at themselves, but it's just, these are people that have a pretty uh, fucked up uh, work-life balance. And that's how they got into that situation to begin with. Um, and it's not, it's not blame or anything. No, 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 no. Just don't, don't get me wrong. This is not, this has nothing to do with any form of blame or, or, or anything along those lines, but it has all to do with the fact that, um, you got yourself into this situation because you are so passionate about a project or you've dedicated too many hours about this, or you've let somebody else, and this might sound very, very, um, uh, like blame pushing it's not, not not what i'm trying to do but you've also let somebody else exploit you to the point where you literally broke um and i think 
combining that with a lot of social uh, stigmas around uh, um, like people that are glorifying a grind, it's the not everybody is like that. Not everybody has the capacity to um, work twenty four seven and just you know, and no, you know, all work no play, right? Make Charlie go mad or whatever the hell his name was. I can't remember. But um, uh, makes Jack a doll boy. Um, but it is it is a thing, right? And. I think it's especially prevalent in an environment where there's also people that do not allow you to have this sense of um, I can relax. And I noticed myself because I've been basically I've spending uh, like uh, I've last week I was um, full sick leave. Um, technically, it's two weeks ago from the time that I read when you'll see this, but I wasn't full sick leave for a uh for a for a week um because we had so many deadlines that were like uh immutable we could not change them at all because how it would work i would i would make in vr the new environments for building projects basically it's my job i build vr environments and it's really cool but we're kind of like a tacked on uh type of deal which basically means that somebody would just, you know, they would just do their regular planning and programming uh, up to the point where, you know, like uh, we've planned the the meeting to present this to the uh, populace then and then. Um, but they never really put into account that I would need to make the environments in 3D, uh, like the... Uh, the idea is a little bit is like we showed the this is what it is right now this is what it's going to be and you could toggle like live in VR between the two so, and you you know could you could really pretty pretty decent uh, level of, of fidelity so that people could like recognize it like oh yeah this is where I'm now I recognize the current situation really well um, and this is what it's going to be right I'm getting a good understanding because occasionally when you just looked at these drawings you're like oh, I don't think a lot is changing until you visualize it in 3D and then you were like yeah I think quite a lot is changing and then you put on that VR headset and then you're standing there and you're recognizing it and you feel like you're actually there and that's the point where a lot of people are like holy shit this is quite a drastic change but I understand it so they're, they're a lot more positive than about our about the projects that you have as your municipality. Anyway, occasionally, like, because these plans are made, like, we're gonna do our presentation at the, uh, then, like, at, at, at the end of the month. Okay, cool. When are the drawings ready? Um, they should be ready soon. And like, but I need at least two weeks, uh, actually more to, you know, built these environments in 3d it's not something i can just uh you know pull out of my ass in a week and they're like yeah but we're still working on them and we're still making adjustments and we're still making changes because that's what they're used to doing right i've heard stories um from people that you know that work like our our uh our um designers um and i mean like um people that design cities like city planners uh, that they were changing stuff for the presentation in the in the you know in the drive towards that presentation. That's insane. And this is not something I can do. I need time to you know create the proper everything because it needs to work. I need to test it. I need to check LOD levels to make sure that there's no weird stuff going on uh with that because you know this needs to run in vr so it's incredibly vulnerable for uh for poor optimization uh, all that kind of stuff and i was just like i need at least three weeks for a simple scene because i need to you know build the entire thing then i need to ensure that the uh that, it, that that we've time to test it uh thoroughly and that you know that what we're actually about to show is also the thing that you want us to show. Because it wouldn't be the first time that you said that, you know, people are like, I we just want this, something very simple, nothing too too difficult. And then you're like, oh hey, we've got this very simple and nothing too difficult, exactly like we discussed. And then they just sit there and they're like, Yeah, but could you do it differently? Yeah, sure. 
but I need another week. <laughs> which is incredibly common practice, which was really annoying, you know. Um, that, that that would happen. So, but I, it, uh, at the end of like, um, I think it was May or something, I can't remember exactly, I got sick and I got um, new antibiotic course and I wasn't really feeling the health. I was dealing with some, uh, with, a, with a flu and a, uh, and a cold at the same time, right? Because, you, you know, you always get it properly. And I was on antibiotics for something completely unrelated to that. So I was feeling like shit. But these were, we had these deadlines. And uh, in previous experience, it already showed that my colleague that works with me on these projects doesn't, is not capable of doing the amount of work that I do within this, you know, within my specific specialization. So we was like, yeah, if she needs to do this, it's got to take at least three times the amount of time, and we can't even ensure that the quality that level that we want to present is reached. So I would need to do it, but I'm sick at the time. So you kind of just work yourself through it, and then it's it's like days that you felt, well, you I would just work for 12 to 15 hours. So I, you know, today I'm feeling good, so I'll just burn the candle at two ends, and I'll take time off when I get it. So I was still working like 36 to 40 hours a week, Sometimes more, but then I would just you know, no, take those hours off the next week because I would, uh, I, I'm no longer allowed to do overtime. My boss doesn't want me to do it because, uh, yeah, it it's taking too much. Uh, um, I want to say strain. I'm forgetting something. I still need to finish these things. Um, but it would take too much. Um, um uh. It, it stressed everybody out basically I would because I would uh, uh, for some projects I did 80 hours of work in a single week and um if one of the first projects once we managed to finish that one up I had two and a half weeks of overtime sitting there um and I had worked during Christmas and New Year's as well so that was was the point where my boss was like you know my my department manager was like yeah I'm gonna forbid you to do overtime and every time that you need to do it, you immediately need to contact me because we need to figure out if then you if it was truly necessary for you to do overtime or if it's something that we could just kind of, you know, ignore and just tell the client, which is ourselves like nine out of 10 times, right? That they can just buzz off and uh, that you get less. Uh, but, you know, so... I finally, like, we got this, we're going into the summer stop. We don't really have an official summer stop, but because a lot of people go on holiday and a lot of um, people go on holiday, we don't really do a whole lot of um, uh, development work during this period, which is kind of glad. So I finally, I just told my, my department head, and I said, so like, yeah, dude, I, I, I've, I haven't recovered yet. I need to spend some time actually recovering. And he was like, yeah, no, I fully understand. Uh, I did a 50% uh, workload last week, but... Man, I, I, I'm so easily, especially when I, when I'm, when the enthusiasm is going, I burn myself out fairly easily. Um, cause I don't mind working 80 hours a week, but at the point that I stop working after those 80 hours, right? And this is 80 hours of work, work. This is not 80 hours of, um, I had a couple of meetings today and it was a bit stressful and yada, yada, yada. No, this is 80 hours, me in Blender and in Unity actually actively doing things, not learning anything, not seeing how, how would I challenge this problem? No, no, no. This is actually clickable, actual fucking work. And I don't, I don't want to say that like having a couple of meetings and having a relaxing day where you put in eight hours of light work isn't work, but this was just 80 hours of heavy, heavy work. And I definitely do not recommend anybody ever doing that because it, it, and I, I can still feel that I haven't fully recharged yet, but I want to also go get back to work full time again because it's good. It, like, it's good for you to work. I think it's good for you to, to, to have, a, have something, um, to, 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 to have on your hands to do. Um, I should have probably brought something to eat for them. I think that's one of the chickens. Yeah, they're right there. Let's uh, take turn off the lantern. And sneak up on them. But yeah, like, I am very prone to this. But my dad, um, he can just... 
like after he done all the work, he just can go and say like, yeah, no, I'm I'm done for today, and he doesn't get bothered by it. Like doing admin doesn't care about it. Uh, oh, I need some bait. Shit. I I I've never used these before, mind you. So you know, uh, I need to get some grains. I will right, just sleep through the night, then we'll try this again tomorrow. Uh, makes sense that I need some bait. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, it's an interesting, uh, thing. I, I am a workaholic by nature. I enjoy working. I have too many hobbies and I'm a perfectionist. So I'm also very prone to, to pretty, uh, bad work habits because of it. Um, but yeah, my advice is, man, take care of yourself. If, if you can work 80 hours a week and it doesn't change you at all, like, good, go go do it if that's what you want, right? If you can't, you really shouldn't be forced to, to live a, a a life where you're forced to do. I uh, was kind of amazed by the amount of shit talking some people do with, uh, like, minimum wage workers and that kind of stuff. Because especially a lot of minimum wage work is is really demanding. Um, I, I think people don't realize this. Um, I think a lot of people... Like, I can do 80 hours of meetings in a week and it doesn't really fucking change me like to in the slightest. Um, it doesn't change me at all. I'm completely fine by it. But doing 80 hours of work in 3D... And in, in, in Unity and in programming and like modeling and, you know, doing all of the uh, creating LODs and also like not just the fun stuff where I'm like, I'm going to design a little like a new, new model or something. No, no, no. I've got here a technical drawing that needs to be one on one recreated in Blender because this is a cat file and exporting cat files into pure FBX is, is horrible. It's a lot of mistakes. So I need to basically redo the entire drawing in now in, in, in Blender. Um, and after all of that is done, um, I need to, you know, check it. It's the get to get engine and I need to do, do make sure that if there's like detailing in there that the poly count isn't too high, because if it's too high, we get like performance issues in VR. So I need to make LODs and making LODs is fucking boring. So first you try always to decimate a model, but decimating models doesn't always go too well. And then you still need to actually fucking make the LODs, right? And you need to render your billboards, make sure that everything works and testing. And there's a lot of actual stuff that you need to do, which is just not that fun. I love my job, but that's like the not fun part of it. I think that's normal, by the way. Uh, I think I'm very lucky with the amount of with the work I have, and I feel definitely feel blessed with that. Yeah, I basically have a dream job. I work in game development without working in game development. My pay is also a lot better than the average uh, person that works into game development. All right, let's see if we can hit this chicken. Uh. Available baits. Oh, God, what kind of grain do I have? Um, wait, why can I not open my own inventory? That's interesting. Okay. So that helps with the cages, it seems. Okay, well, I don't know where that chicken went, because I can't see shit right now. Oh, there it went. Shit. Alright, we're gonna do that during the day, because I can't fucking see shit. Um, but yeah, um, I, I love my job. And I'm really glad I'm back to work. And, you know, I know some of you are, uh, especially if you knew me before, like, the Vintage Story series, that um, I kind of sad about the fact that I'm over streaming, because imagine... This type of stuff that I'm doing now, but then three times a week for three hours at each session. Um, just rambling and ranting, uh, live on stream, interacting with you guys. But I'm not going to go back to that. It's just doing that and work full time is going to be too much. Plus, I'm working on my own video game and design of that. Plus, I have hobbies. Plus, I have social obligations. And I'm still dealing with some health issues. Ah. <laughs> uh. Luckily, I have insomnia, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to put that many hours in a day. That's sarcasm, by the way. <laughs> it doesn't help. Uh, yeah. Ah! Piss off. Current rift activity is low with a rift in front of my house. 
Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. And as much as I dislike saying it, it is true most of the time. Um, it happens to be what life is throwing at you. But the health thing hopefully will improve soon. Uh, I'm going to appoint me at the end of the month with a specialized clinic that should give me some more insight into the entire issue. Thing is, this is and this is this is difficult for everybody involved. This includes with for the doctors that are involved. It is this like they recognize something is physically wrong. Like this is not just a mental issue, right? It's not something they can kind of say like, yeah. Do mindfulness, right? Because that's what a lot of people get. And I think a lot of things are related to stress. Um, but in my case, they're just so like, yeah, no, we we recognize that something is pretty damn wrong with you. We just don't have no clue what it is, and we're not really that well equipped to 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 deal with that as as we speak. And it's that combination of doctors just kind of looking at you and saying, like, yeah. But we actually have no idea. Um, and that, that's, that's rough. That's really rough. <sighs> Little shits, never mind. I thought I was gonna do the house thing that I talked about last episode, but I'm not gonna bother with it now. I'm just gonna go to sleep. Hopefully the rift that spawned from the house will disappear. I said it there because I thought about a very low activity year round, but it apparently is on the edge of a moderate to high activity area, I guess. Okay, it's freezing. But the house is a little bit warmer, I think, because I'm no longer getting the effects of freezing. But uh, that means that we need to uh, switch out some of the clothing. Or some better temperature shit. There we go. And this is all because this has no temperature uh, defense. Um... See, this gives me a plus three here, plus two there. And one of the things that I want to prevent now is getting hit because that damages my gear. Oh, yeah. I want these fackers to get away from me, farm. Maybe I want to. Build a low wall, light up the area eventually, but it's gonna wait till six. Then I'm gonna go after chicken. So I wanna try to get at least two so I can get sort of breeding program going. But you can see that the um, the ground outside is being whitish. Basically means that uh, that's freezing. It also means that most crops probably will have stopped growing. Now I don't think we go below freezing temperature during the the day, so we can see. Like the uh, the 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 crops finishing to grow, but yeah, is that portal still there? Yeah, that's where they're spawning. But right, I'm just gonna loop around. Oh, never mind. I guess just gotta run off, you know. Loop around the farm. I love my little hamlet, by the way. I like my little my little housing. This looks good. This probably won't grow that much right now. We'll check quickly on the farm uh, before the day kicks in. This makes it a little bit easier for me to spot the chickens. Because um, right now, they probably won't grow. Oh, they're actually... The turnips are fine, interestingly enough. Um... I would say when it's too cold for them to grow, but I seem like they're still fine. That's interesting. I thought they would be completely goofed. Rise done. Seven, eight. Oh, some of my cabbages are done. I think that one still needs one level. Yeah. Oh, I think that one might not have been finished. 
Eight out of nine. Seven out of nine. Yeah. Things are looking good, though. Things are looking good. Uh, I'm running out of inventory space like this. <laughs> let's put the lantern back in hand. The food is no longer that much of a concern anyway. Right, let's go for the chickens. I'll go for the chickens. I need four of them anyway. Uh, let's not dunk myself in the water. It is six in the morning and it's still freezing. Uh, getting wet does make you more susceptible for cold temperatures. So. Now there's a way, by the way, to get rid of them, but it also requires some an item that I don't have. That's the temporal gear I keep talking about. Basically, if you remember from the earlier episode, like I have a bunch of gears that I sifted out of the uh, junk. They're rusted gears. They're like the trading commodity that people use. I don't know why, but it's basically it's currency. Now there's a a like a glowy uh, teal turquoise version of it. Um, that one is special. It's like that still holds like the magical power, I guess. And you can either use that to set your spawn point, or you can use it by inserting it in yourself, I believe, to uh, increase temporal stability, which is the uh, Basically that color. If you find a gear that looks like that, if you use it on the ground, it will actually set your spawn point, which is pretty neat. Um, then you don't need to spawn, like, right, uh, I believe it is, let's see, right here on this mountain. We're a little, yeah, we're a little unlucky with our spawn, but it's not that far away. Uh, please don't go snowing. Uh, we might have snow soon. Well, it is already warming up. Like, the sun's breaking through. Uh, yeah, we're on that edge of being cold, I guess, so we can see a little bit of... Oh, morning snow. Hey, horns. All right, let's see if we can find chickens. Oh, we are getting proper snow. Yep, it's cooling down and we're getting snow. Yeah, I know, buddy. Oh, that's... That wolves or just two donkeys? Donkeys. Oh, that are the wolves are ignoring them. What's that a moose? Oh, that's a bear. That's a chicken. We're here for the chicken. Not the bunny rabbit. Not the deer. That's definitely a moose. Yeah, we're definitely having snow. I can't see shit. I like to sneak up on a fucking chicken, but being in it on a, on a uh, incline, I need to jump up. Just scares the damn chicken. Is there a chicken next to me? Oh, no, I'm, I've lost sight of the damn chicken. Shit. Oh, no, there it is. A little bit further. Animal captured. There we go. Alright, so I've... Dude, seriously? Get out of my ass. Dude, don't be rude. I only tried to capture a chicken. as a hen. Well, what I want these eggs, at least. Dude, seriously, what the hell's your problem, buddy? I've never seen him do that before. There's a lot of meat on these things, but my inventory is too full. Otherwise, I would have attempted to... Oh, I might actually... There we go. Grabbed the weapon. He was like, oh yeah, you know what? The guy may not be as friendly. Okay, well... um, That one contains chicken. Good. Now, uh, there might be an... Oh, there we go. See, right there. I can barely see him. Okay, let's try it again. I need to actually... I can't be in... Uh... There we go, nice! Another hen. Okay. Buddy, I have a spear and I'm not... I'm a... I don't want to hurt him because I'm afraid he will, he will attack me back. 
But I am seriously considering it and just dropping a bag here temporarily. Piss off. Hold on, maybe. Maybe I can lure him. Closer to the house. Like I got two chickens, so basically that's already done. And if I can hunt this guy and kill it, um, that might have be a bad idea. This is sort of how you normally would do it. But not really. I don't know why. Like, I don't... You cannot, by the way, tame moose. Meese. Mice. Moose? Moose. Mostly moving through the minimap right now. Uh, but if I can kill him close to the house. Like, I'm trying... Probably gonna try to... Okay, he buggered off. Is he gonna go back to me again? I don't know what the hell is going on with that. No, he bugged off. Okay. See if we can find some more chickens around that spot. I think, I swear to God, I think I get, it gives you here a clock. Hey there, buddy. Nah, he's running. That's what he's supposed to do. I don't even know idea. Hmm. Anyway, let's see if we can find another chicken. That might be that all white ones are hens and like the brown black ones are, um, um, cocks. And immediately demonetized. YouTube heard the word. They were like, no! This man is speaking about genitalia. No, I'm speaking about chickens. That's bunny. We don't want the bunny. Um, there's another animal type that I want to... Fuck off, buddy. That we want to see if we can find. Uh, but I haven't had any luck spotting them this time around, which is goats or... Um, they're not, they're, they're, they're goat-ish. Basically, you use them for making cheese. I'm really glad I made the, uh, made the, uh, fur gear. There's a lot of clothing in the game, but this is not particularly the best, I believe. Um... So... I think if you go for plain cloth, you can kind of get an overview, like here, like reindeer herd or fur coat, which is like this one, that's this one. It's a better version, right? Chateau pants are better than the one I'm using right now. There's a lot of, even the pastoral pants, which are fairly sim. We can make these easily, I just need to get more flax. Oh, here, by the way, this is soaking wet thing that I was talking about, that basically lowers your temperature resistance. Um, if it goes below zero degrees, or over, I don't know how much, because I never really had that problem. You basically, um... You, um... We could probably make that. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna it. Anyway. That's a raccoon, that's not a chicken. Uh... You can, uh... So, yeah, sorry, temperature goes to zero. This basically gives you room, wiggle room, to above the extreme or below the extreme. Now, the soaking wet one gives you, I think, a, like a small debuff added onto it. Where's the other spot that we found chickens? I um, did mark it. There it is, chickens with the bees. Because I have room for two more chickens, so I might as well get two more chickens. Uh, let's eat some of that. Can you imagine if I had to lure these chickens all the way back to the house? It would be just a design. And that's how you normally do it. And this is the only reason I got... Because otherwise I would have got something... Like if, if there was a mod that gave me a lead or something to tame these beasts. Oh fuck, I forgot that there's always wolves around here. Please don't fucking kill me. I'm so done. With wolves. And being squishy. I don't really want to jump into the water. It's a wild boar. I'm not... I really need to start making armor at some point. <laughs> okay, so actually what we're at right here is much warmer. See, there's another chicken. I hope I can hit them in the water. That I don't think I can that easily. Wait, where the hell did you go, chicken? Did you sink? Oh, well. 
Temperature here isn't that bad, so... They occasionally go below the water level. I don't know what it is. Can I even throw these? That's definitely a rooster, by the way. Animal captured. Just immediately sinks to the fucking floor. There we go. Where's that other chicken? Can I throw these underwater? Yeah. Okay, I missed. This makes it actually quite a bit easier. Oh! Oh, where the hell did it go? Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. We got the animal. Okay, so we got the chickens. Now I need to get past that damn wolf again without killing myself. All right. Um, how much did it damage my clothing? Yeah, a little bit, bastard. Not that much, but you know, enough to um, warrant a little bit of caution. We might be able to go over the mountain, like go like this, and just kind of avoid. Because they're always around here. Now I could hunt them to extinction, and I probably will eventually. Um, because you can overhunt an area and it will, it will recover eventually, by the way, but it will take a while. That's, that's also why, uh, the wolves around the house are only imperious. Like, there's one or two of them and I tend to hunt them right now instead of running away from them and it's not that much of a problem anymore. Part of that, uh, uh, basically. Uh, we can put the turnips like that. So yeah, we've got three chickens in the hand now. I know, I don't know what that efficiency thing is or a break chance. Type of dealio, but uh, I'm hoping it will not be much of a problem. So, this is us. Look at us. The glorious mustache. <laughs> yeah, let's make our way home. Four chickens. That is that. Then we just need to get the horse uh, stables built at some point. Uh, so he's, you know, got some cover during winter. It doesn't really matter. Animals, I don't think, are bothered by temperature that much. It does determine their spawn rates, particularly the moment you have domesticated, like, well, these basically now are. Uh, they aren't fully domesticated, but yeah, I think it's like the third or fourth generation that they're considered domesticated. It doesn't really matter. Um, they are no longer afraid of you and they won't stop. Uh, at some generation, they'll stop attacking you. I believe it's the second or the third. Oh, there's more chickens here. Um... Check out. There we go. And wrap the chicken. Not the grass, the chicken. There we go. Um, but yeah. Uh, we need to get the new bow done as well. With chickens now, I do have room for feathers, so that's kind of great. Room, I mean, I have a more steady source of feathers. So what we're probably going to do, I want to have about six chickens, I think, on average. Uh, and at least one rooster at all times so we can have more chickens, right? Makes sense. Not that complicated. You need a rooster to get more chickens. Because, uh, you know, it it gets a bit difficult otherwise. Um, I don't have room to make bring that fox carcass with me, so I'm going to let it go. Um, oh, I can barely see the house from here, but that's right there. It's the weather, man. It's yeah, it is colder where we're settled than it was down there at the water. It's a lot better temperature wise there. We're gonna settle in on a bit a little bit of colder. Okay, that was just a little bit of a collapse. I thought another wolf was coming after me. Like, oh no. Um well I've heard of ball, I at some point need to get some uh, predator meat, but I'll probably hunt a wolf for that or something. We'll figure it out. Um, but, yeah. See, this is... I, for me, like, personally, like, playing right now, and I mentioned this at the start of the episode, I have the feeling like I've been barely playing, like, maybe 30 minutes maximum. And I just look over at the recording, and we're at 50... almost 55 minutes already. What did I do? I crafted four capture thingies, and I captured four chickens. That's it. <laughs> time flies. It's like when I... Every time I load up the save for, for doing... When I do any recording, so I just notice the... the the rapid increase in hours that is already in this series. It's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, after this, I don't really know what we're going to do. Except for, oh, if, if you're following me home, I will 
stab you in the ass. I don't think he will. I may actually. What if I sprint so he doesn't. Because I think he wants to nozzle me like two to three times and then he kind of just buggers off. Yeah, look at that. He's still going. If I can get him into the horse pen, that would be a great. Nah, see, it buggers off after a while. Hmm. It'll give me a lot of meat in the ladder, and that's basically why I was trying to see if I could lure him back in. Wait, is he still going? Wait, maybe I can lure him like this. Hold on. Hey there, buddy. You're gonna run. No, I, I don't know what. Some weird. It might be a bug in its AI. I don't know. Anyway, uh, let's get the chickens released. I don't know how long they'll stay inside those balls without any. You know, problems. Hey, Steve. Weight's good, so that's fine. Chicken on the hook. Nice for dinner. And... I kind of just dropped them here. If they can't move out, I'll make that thing bigger. But I think, in theory, these chickens should be, like, one high. Otherwise, I'll make the door too high. I don't really care. So I think it's control... No... How do, how do you unleash the chicken? Capture chicken. Chicken. That one broke. That one broke. That one broke. They all broke. But, I think I saw one of them actually leaving the pen. I don't know for sure. I thought I saw one of them leaving the pen. Or leaving the... Uh, shed yeah the panic thing is oh, there he is the panic thing is gonna be for a while until i uh until they um get, slowly get domesticated but yeah chickens we've, we've got now chickens um i don't know how egg laying works i don't know if, even if they lay eggs but we have a source of feathers now and source of meat uh egg is there an egg egg <laughs> another hand here egg raw chicken egg you gain it from chicken eggs. Okay, so they drop eggs. Oh, I need to make a hand box. Place a hand box down a spot. Hands will lay eggs and hang with by preference, not on the ground. Once the hand box has three eggs, a broody hand will sit on those eggs will hatch. Oh, that's cool. How do you make one? Okay, that's easy. So we can make a couple of those. Let's make a couple of those. So they make at least like, like five of them, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, Five, and that please be able to stack. Yeah, good, good, good. My shift key is stuck. There we go, and there we go, and then I have so because I wanted to have like six, uh, five breeding chickens and a, and a rooster. Um. And they have already left the little pen here. But this is kind of the idea, right? So they can leave it. And hopefully they'll... Uh... I've not really a lot of experience with green chickens. I've done a, uh, a, a goat. Um, and it was a lot easier for me to check on that goat. Um, because I could get close to him. But hopefully that works. If it doesn't break their pathfinding, it should be okay. They can get some info on them eventually. I could sneak up on them maybe and get some info on the chickens. Nah, I've got to close. But they seem to be able to run up there, so I think it would work. Hm. We'll see. Otherwise, I'll probably get some more regular stairs in there. How are we looking on this? This is almost done. And then it goes into the strong leather bath. If it, and then it produces one or two letters, depending on how much you... Like, the larger height you put in there, the more raw leather it actually uh, makes. It's that simple. But, yeah. The quest for chickens only took me two hours. <laughs> A little bit less. A little bit less. But, where are the little buggers? Look at them. Chickens. Actual flipping chickens. And now I've got a roof to sit on as well. Like, like, like how, how great is that? Can you? Yeah, there you go. I always like it sitting on the edge with the legs going over it. But yeah, we're, we're prepped for winter. We, we got our winter foods going in. 
Uh, final growth hopefully happens, but the uh, days are already getting short. Uh, we're in October, so we still got October, November, December, and then we got three months of winter. So we're 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 barely like we're set up pretty cold. Now, before I am gonna end i will show you my other world because i did talk about that and i can't remember if i did in the previous episode or in this one um we're roughly i'm a little bit further ahead in that one and i am in iron already there but i want to just show you anyway so just just a little bit of an extra right um and uh that we have actually about the same time in it as well that's interesting um might have slept a little bit more on that one i don't know I have been messing. I've got things in this one I don't have in that one. So you know, I like the chickens, um, but I do have a goat. This is my other world. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at that. We're in November. We're actually not that even that much further ahead. And this is my charcoal burn pit. This is my you know burning things. My little my birch tree here. So. Here you can see like the inspiration for my other shed. This one is a little bit better organized though. This is my angry uh, ram. Um, he doesn't like me. Ah, oh, this isn't, isn't the one where I built the shed at yet. I built, I migrated this entire thing. That's why you see those dirt pillars to a different world. But I think I've deleted that world because it was bugged with some mods. But yeah, this is my, and it's got a little bit of greenhouse. But this is my other world. So yeah. We're basically got the same thing. The difference is here. I have to get. Oh, I'm actually creative because I was working around with migrating it. Um, I think the bigger difference is here that I have access to uh, iron tools here. Um, yeah, this is also one of the things that we're gonna do eventually, probably at some point. Is uh, is this? Like clothing wise, we're probably looking roughly. To, oh wait, no, I'm not actually even in my winter clothing yet. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so, same thing, large farm. And this house was built in one of the ruins. Now, this will used to be like a church uh, type of deal, but um, I uh, eventually replaced everything, and this is like my, my little basement area. With more lanterns, because I had lots more luck in there, but like same thing, like even have more food in my current one than I in this one, so. We're more than fine for winter. So yeah, this is what my first world looked like, but we're roughly at the same point. I think this is here that I got iron, and the other one I don't. But I just really, after tin, immediately went for iron. As you can see, like, we've got a little bit less building-wise done. Um, my leather-working operations isn't entirely in these three barrels. Um, so yeah. Uh, and not, not as great as an area, I'll be honest. I prefer the, uh, I prefer my new house. I think it looks better. Right! That's it. I'm going to thank everyone for watching. See you all for the next one. Have a very good day. Bye-bye.